All right, today we're gonna to be replacing the timing belt, water pump, camshaft seal, crankshaft seal on this four cylinder Toyota Camry engine. The engine's called the 5SFE. Now, if you're in a situation where the timing belt is broke, this is a non-interference engine, so you can put on a new belt, not worry about or the valve's bent or not. Replacing a broken belt is a pretty full straightforward procedure. You just set the crankshaft at top dead center, take the camshaft and move it to the top dead center mark, and then just basically put on the belt. So we're gonna start by removing the power steering belt and the alternator AC belt. So then we can proceed to removing the crankshaft pulley. Now I use a brass hammer to move the pulley forward. And that will allow me to remove the belt. We'll remove the tension off the pivot bolt for the alternator. Then we'll remove the tension off the alternator adjustment bolt. And now we should be able to push the alternator down. Now the alternator belt is off. So there's a power steering belt. This is the alternator belt. Now we'll remove the crankshaft pulley bolt. This is a high mass 19 millimeter crankshaft bolt removal tool that I used on a Honda. And on the 5SFE engine, the crankshaft bolt is 19 millimeters. So this should work wonderfully removing the crankshaft pulley bolt. There's butter. <laughs> okay. I don't need to use a, uh, a pulley removal tool because this is sliding in and out pretty easy. So I'm going to put the bolt back on loosely just so that I can crank the crankshaft to the top dead center mark. Now, if this pulley was stuck due to corrosion, you want to pull this off, you would have to use a pulley removal tool, sometimes called a harmonic balancer puller kit. You would take this and mount it like this and turn this center bolt clockwise and that will pull on the pulley. So you would use a set of two bolts and screwed into the holes in here these two holes in here so that this bracket has something to pull on so it works something like this so as you tighten this down it'll pull the pulley off the shaft of the crankshaft This is called the dog bone or the torque rod. This bushing popped out. You have three 14 millimeter bolts that holds the side motor mount bracket. So just loosen this bolt up first, but don't take it out. And then you'll need to go under the car and remove the two bolts from underneath here. Now this hose has this tendency to get in the way, it's a power steering hose. So you have one of two options. You could just deal with the hose, just constantly keep pushing off to the side if it gets in the way. Or you can drain the power steering fluid from the bottom and then just move the whole container out of the way over here. So for this video, I'm just going to deal with the hose slightly being in the way.
So I'll push this hose in and then try to finagle this cover out. The timing mark for the camshaft is a little groove right up here. See that little notch? And you line up that notch with this hole that's down here. So that's how you line up the camshaft. So we have to rotate the crankshaft another 360 degrees to get this hole up here to line up with this notch over here. Now, in the process of taking off the cover, you have to detach this electrical fitting over here. So I detach that, and there's another fitting down there, but that's been broken off previously. I think I've dropped the cover and pull out from the bottom. Now I'll take this cover off over here. So if you want to identify top dead center when you have positioned it before taking off the pulley, you could put a little paint mark on the little cog over here and line it up to the engine over there. So this little orange mark here lines up with this orange mark over there. Turning at 360 degrees. So that notch in the back lines up with the crankshaft hole. What you could do is put little paint marks with this little dimple on the camshaft pulley. It, it's just slightly off to the right. But basically the alignment mark is that hole with the notch behind the uh, camshaft. Yeah, now we can take the belt off. So uh, relieve tension on the tensioner pulley. Now there's a spring down here that's applying constant tension on the belt, so I'll remove this spring. Now with that spring removed and the bolt removed, pulley should just come right off. And now we can remove the belt. How you can tell if the bearings are going bad is when you let your car sit overnight and then you start it first thing in the morning and you're hearing a rattling noise coming out of the timing belt cover and then after the engine warms up that rattling noise disappears. What's going on is the grease inside the bearing has settled and as the rotation warms up the grease and spreads the grease around then the bearings settle down they stop making noise but that's a telltale sign that the bearing is on its way out that eventually uh, there's going to be so much wear between the bearing and the pulley that the bearing will start to wobble which will then put undue stress on the belt and then make the belt snap alternator bracket is in the way of the water pump so we're going to remove the alternator and just position it off to the side and we'll just put that off to the side So here's a new pump. We're dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. It's like a mounting point. That's a mounting point. That's a mounting point.
So you got a nice clean matting surface to put on the new gasket and the pump. I use a uh, quarter inch socket wrench. Apply, apply tension evenly to all the uh, bolts for the water pump. I'm going to use a quarter inch so that I don't over torque it and potentially shear off the uh, bolts. Now we'll use the chain strap wrench to hold the camshaft to remove the camshaft sprocket so I can get to the cam seal. By right, using this tool, I'm going to remove the old cam seal. I'm going to work it in. So I got that angled in. <coughs> Alright, so this is a new seal. I coat it with silicone grease. Silicone grease is waterproof and won't react with the rubber to make it swell. I'll just seat it in there for now while I get my uh, seal installation tool. Okay, this is my seal installation tool. It's like a cup that goes right over the seal. I'll put even pressure on the seal. Looks like a plastic film that was on the, uh, the seal. Let's see it in there flush. So we move that seal down here. <coughs> so basically what I did was uh, I used a screwdriver to open this part of the seal up so I could take this tool which is a paint can opener, put it in between here and then pull the seal out. This you push this one in with your fingers. That's it. It's in there tight. Oh, one thing I want to note <clears throat> is sometimes with uh, high mileage cameras, and I'm talking like 200,000 miles, the oil pump seal behind here has a tendency to, to leak. So you have to take this oil pump out in order to replace the seal. So you got around six, a half dozen or eight of these mounting bolts. You may think the leak is coming from here but it's not, it's coming from behind here. So instead of using a new O-ring, 
take the oil pump out, clean it up, and coat it with RTV, and then mount that back on. But once you have it off, you might as well replace the seal, the uh, shaft oil pump seal. So this is the new idler pulley, or guide pulley, whichever term you want to use. We're going to mount the tensioner pulley. When the belt is on, then we'll attach a spring, which will then force the tensioner pulley up on the belt and remove any belt slack. And then at that point, you tighten up the bolt. Make sure that the arrows on the belt is pointing towards the front of the car. What we'll do now is advance the camshaft around a cog to the right to give enough slack to mount the belt. Okay, the belt is on. Now, if we move the camshaft counterclockwise back to the alignment point and there's no slack on the belt, then we got perfect alignment. Otherwise, I gotta do it again. What do you think? Do the hole in the water pump. Okay. Tighten this up. The bracket for the uh Alternator. Okay, we'll start the car now. Let's see how the belt looks. So the belt's a little loose, so we're going to tighten it up. It's too loose. So we'll take the slack off over on the right side. I moved the can shaft counterclockwise, which removed the slack. Now you got a little bit of slack here. So when I remove the tension off the tensioner pulley, the spring should pull in the slack. See, it just moved up. Now I'm tightening it back up. Now it's tight again. So let's start the car and see what happens. Yeah, that was much better. Before the belt was going up and down like this, over here, now it's only going like this. It's like a flutter.
this cover in here, I gotta sort of move these power steering lines and AC line sort of out of the way. This corner of the upper cover went over this corner of the lower cover. Then you put one bolt to secure the two together. Use this long bolt. The long bolt over here. Here that you can't see. I just got to feel around my hands. Now you could just tighten all the bolts up. All right, let's see how it sounds. Make sure that the timing belt covers were installed properly. If, if anything went wrong, you'll you'll hear the belt wrapping against the side of the cover. mistake that a lot of people do is they put the pulley on first before they put on the side bracket. You put the side bracket on first and then you put on the pulley because if you put the pulley on first then it's really hard to get to these to, to these two mounting points for the side bracket because the pulley's in the way. Let me just make this hand tight. Okay. Our steering belt goes on first. Okay. Then comes the alternator belt. When you're tightening it, the belt shouldn't twist more than 45 degrees. That's about, that's about right. Now the pivot bolt gets tightened. You need a uh, pry tool to put tension on the belt. And while you're putting tension on the belt, apply torque to the locking nut. Okay, that's pretty tight. Let the car run and let all the air bubbles work out. And we're done.